I pace around trying to remember that last line of that poem I wrote. But then the memories begin to drown and nonchalant cases begin to float. Forget me, for I am but a figment of your memory. Conflicted to trade a daring person, I will not miss but the memories. I am the vault that holds things so sacred, but my brain was like the guard with reverie. Forget me, for I am but a figment of your memory. Resisting is only a regretful word for remorse. Again, my friend, we must make amends, but I, the wind, cannot speak, so I ask the trees for a warning to be sent. Forget me, for I am but a figment of your memory. I am the history of tomorrow, but the history of mine was yesterday. How oft do I lose a memory of mine, washed on shore a seashell yells my name. Forget me, for I am but a figment of your memory. These are the first four stanzas of I wrote, that I wrote shortly after my mom arrived from her pilgrimage to Mecca. She told me that while she was there, she was so entranced by the purity and holiness of the place that she blurted out a four-line stanza and kept on repeating it. When she had arrived home, she had only remembered two, and a week later, she had forgotten it all. It wouldn't have hurt her to write it down, but oh well. Now, I could go on and explain what this poem truly means, but I think the beauty of poetry is found when trying to analyze it yourself. I could, however, go through the literary elements, such as the personification of seashell yelling my name, and so on and so forth. Yet, with all of these literary elements, I would not call this a good poem unless it invoked something bigger. Poetry isn't good because it's complex. It isn't good because it's simple. Take Dr. Seuss's poetry. He makes poetry that is aimed specifically for kids. But why would I call his work poetry and not any other work that I find on the internet? It's because despite the crazy words he comes up with, like the thingamajig, or the abstract ideas that he makes, like the cat in the hat, he still gives some leeway for children to explore what these things actually mean or how they act like. And in the case of the cat in the hat, it could even symbolize something bigger, such as disobedience. But what does modern poetry look like today? It's very noticeable that our medium for exchanging poetry has drastically changed. Back then, if you wanted to publish a poem, you would get rejected from every editor every single time. And on the bright chance that one editor accepts you, the best case scenario is that you're going to have your poem in a small column of a newspaper or in one page of a poetry book. Nowadays, you can publish poems with one click of a button. And so people can post what they want right away without giving it a second thought. And on the other hand, the users of these social media platforms are mindlessly uh, scrolling through this platform. And so when they go there, they go there for a place of entertainment, a place of escape. And if they see something too complex, they will most likely skip it. So poets, naturally, have to accommodate to this. And what they do is that they make their poetry short, concise, and straightforward. Let me give you this example. I sat by the curb as it rained, thinking about all of my pain. Here, it has rhyme, it has rhythm, it has imagery, it has good literary elements. Yet, it is too straightforward, yet too vague at the same time. And I know, those two sound like antonyms, right? But the straightforwardness comes in the essence of the situation, where it is as simple as somebody sitting by the curb as it rained, thinking about all of their pain. The vagueness comes in the word pain. The poet might have written this poem with the intention of speaking about the pain of grieving a loved one, but you, on the other hand, might be interpreting it as the pain of losing maybe half a mark on a test. And so this vagueness allows a factor of relatability, and the relatability makes this poem seem more appealing. In fact, it is something as simple as it could ever be. And here, it isn't that unique, it isn't that original. And it makes you feel like the poem is deeper than what it already is. 
And when a poem looks deeper than what it actually is, we call this phenomena fake deep poetry. Now, what is fake deep poetry? It is, as the name suggests, something that looks deep, but once you take a closer look, it really isn't. And so it has been popping up a lot recently with the constant name dropping of serious issues. Some poets think that if they name drop issues, it will look more brave, but in fact, it just makes their poems weaker. So let me give you this example. This poet has troubles with their father. So this poet writes, my father, he is never proud. To this day, he has not said it aloud. And here, yeah, again, it has rhyme and it has rhythm, but it is almost the complete opposite of my previous example. It is too straightforward. But what if I reword it? What if I said, I want to give you the satisfaction of a million critiques. I want to rise from the lowest lows and reach the standard that you call the peak. Here, not only is it more open to interpretation, but it keeps the initial goal of the poet while also making others empathize with the situation. Back then, in the previous example, it was only narrow to a certain group of people who have went through the circumstance. But the beauty of language is to make people empathize, to make people feel something that they have never experienced. This begs an even bigger question. How did we get to poetry today? It is as simple as it could ever be. Labeling. Poetry is such an open form of art that anything can constitute for a poem these days. In fact, there's a type of poetry called contemporary poetry in which it asks you to make poetry that does not sound like poetry. Try saying that 10 times fast. And so nowadays, anything will be labeled as a poem. Some people will write advice, dialogue, or experiences and label them as poetry when they could be channeling this energy into making memoirs, advice books, or even young adult novels. I mean, celebrities come out with more poetry books than Martha Stewart comes out with cookbooks. And trust me, she makes a lot. Let me tell you this good poem that I heard recently. Listen to this. Actual poetry. Listen to my story. Stay to watch the way. Let the ages play. Weave to the young men. Speak these words again. It sounds so beautiful, so raw, so original. You want to know who the author is? Artificial intelligence. Is it so original anymore? I don't think so. Poetry is so unique that it is considered as another Turing test. And a Turing test is basically a test to see if artificial intelligence has reached human intelligence. And so if poetry is brought about upon a person and a person cannot identify that an AI wrote this, then artificial intelligence will be deemed as intelligent as us. If we keep mislabeling things, then we might as well say that AI is as intelligent as us. But you may be asking, Zahra, who are you to critique poetry? Isn't poetry subjective? Well, brace yourselves. I'm about to hit you with a hard truth. It is not. Poetry is not subjective. Think about it. If poetry was subjective, why would we go to school every day and learn and read literature from before? Why do we take upon ourselves English majors that criticize and tell us the elements of literature that tell us what's good and tell us what's bad. It's so that we can channel all of this energy into our own work and make our work that much better. It's okay, I won't judge your taste of poetry. You may like bad poetry and hate good poetry. I am not here to judge you. But your preference does not change the fact of whether this poem is good or whether this poem is bad. And here I will complete the final stanza of that poem I wrote earlier. And I, too frail to answer the call, look into my head for a rejoiced symphony. And although the record player may be broken, I'll hear new sounds blissfully. Forgive me, for I, the poem, and this last line are 
ellipses, incomplete. I left the poem open to insert you into my narrative. That's the beauty of poetry. It truly is. Let me tell you one of the greatest poems I've actually heard. And trust me, it's not written by AI. I'm not tricking you again. It was as simple as it could ever be. Four letters, two words, one space, recited by the greatest, Muhammad Ali. It was me, we. Now, what does me, we mean? It has no meaning. Because you are the one that will input meaning into it. You will identify what it means. Muhammad Ali, he never told us what it meant. He left it open for us. Does change start with me and then it ends with we? Should I forget about me and focus on the we? The opportunities are endless. What is so great about poetry and this magnificent art is that it invokes, better yet, it incites emotion and it instills thought. And poetry might not have a definitive meaning, but one thing is true. Poetry is a form of art that involves you. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk.